The impeachment probe has opened up a can of worms into the Bidens that I can't help but feel Joe and the gang really wanted to keep closed because not only do you have uh, his son being called out for being a deadbeat dad and fathering an Ill illegitimate child, but there's also a new probe in this country called uh, Burisma, with, which uh, it ties into the Ukraine thing. So that whole situation is coming back to bite the Democratic Party on its behind. But yet and still, the debates were last night. And Tulsi, as per usual, was a firecracker that was completely getting um, cold water tossed on her by, you know, the media and the establishment there because they just, they hate her guts. And the, the fact that they hate her guts is a big part of the reason why I love Tulsi Gabbard so much. She's she hasn't had a, she hasn't stood a chance in hell since she entered the race. Okay, like I have like all of this, and I've said it on multiple occasions, is a gigantic waste of time. That's it. It's just distracting. It's it's a cute. It's really cute to to um, ignore you know civil unrest taking place in other places of the world or. The fact that the Biden, the Bidens are getting a lot of, uh, you know, dirt uh, slung on their names because of the whole press for impeachment over the Ukraine thing, when in reality, the blue side has been doing its damnedest to <laughs> undermine Trump since his uh, since he got elected. And the deal is, is that once again, I'm not the world's biggest uh, Trump fan or supporter, but at the same time. When I saw it happening to Obama, I didn't like it. And so when I see it happening now to Trump, I don't like it. Uh, and I refuse to be a hypocrite. So, yeah, that's just, uh, you know, some, some early thoughts because I'm not doing whole videos on those issues taking place. But I do want to, you know, just highlight Tulsi in, the, in her debate the performance as well. Because let's be real, since like this this like the 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 reason her her entire candidacy has been dead on arrival is because of her unwillingness to buckle to the DNC and the powers that be on that side when it came to Hillary Clinton last go around so trust me they there is no love lost and one of the things that they've been trying to do their best is to smear her as some type of you know oh fox news um rotten roger ailes i guess i don't know um, <laughs> uh who else uh, like some a russian bot and russian acid even though that's all they've been saying for the past three years it's insanity but let's give it a little bit of uh even though i'm feeling some kind of way tulsi that you guys claimed my last tulsi video it's all good, baby. I, I got hella love for you. So let's let's let this rock. I'm running for president to be the Democratic nominee that rebuilds our Democratic Party, takes it out of their hands and truly puts it in the hands of the people of this country, a party that actually hears the voices of Americans who are struggling all across this country. And that's why you're not going to get the nomination. This is not how that works, okay? <laughs> the way the machine works is that they already have 30% that they can just point in a direction and that's the direction that they'll go because their paychecks are directly tied to being a, a useful tool so that's what really deaded you from uh the beginning but if anybody on this stage even the newcomer um Duvall he, like if any if anybody on the stage I genuinely believe is the most sincere is TG right here and puts it in the hands of veterans and fellow Americans who are calling for an end to this ongoing Bush, Clinton, Trump foreign policy doctrine of regime change wars, overthrowing dictators and other. Okay, so here's the thing about love. Love does, isn't isn't unconditional. Love comes with scrutiny. If you truly love something, and this is really where a lot of Americans get things completely ass backwards if you truly love something then you're going to criticize it then you're going to um take a critical eye towards it because you you know you want it to be better and when it comes to foreign policy that's actually one of the spaces i think that the president president trump has done rather well in 
I mean, from trying to bring um, China to uh, a more reasonable uh, position when it comes to trade, as well as North Korea and, um, you know, taking a lot of control, like, you know, saying holding countries accountable with the UN and all these different accords and agreements that have been signed over the years. I got to say that when it comes to foreign policy, Trump's been way better than I even expected. Their countries needlessly sending my brothers and sisters in uniform into harm's way to fight in wars that actually undermine our national security and have cost us thousands of American lives. These are wars that have cost us as American taxpayers trillions of dollars since 9-11 alone, dollars that have come out of our pockets, out of our hospitals, out of our schools, out of our infrastructure needs. As president, I will end this foreign policy, end these regime change orders work to end this new cold war in arms race and instead invest our hard-earned taxpayer dollars actually into serving the needs thank of the american people thank you and that's really i i agree wholeheartedly a hundred percent but at the same time um like we we have all these different um intelligence apparatuses right and one of the things I think America has been pretty clever with, but at the same time, it can come back and bite us on the behind, is playing both sides of any conflict. We hedge our bets, right? So the CIA will back one, the uh, Interpol, or not Interpol, Interpol's not American, but um, like, you know, uh, 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 another, uh, another federal agency will back another, like Department of Homeland Security will back another, and boom like no matter how it plays out we we win <laughs> and honestly i don't have that much of a problem with that in concept but it should always be about the um you know um lessening the impact and the devastation you know like in keeping everyone safe not just americans but people across the country across the world it's about it should be keeping as many people safe and um as possible basically here at home. Senator Harris, any response? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> And they all laughing because they like, oh, yeah, okay, Harris, here's your chance to go back at Tulsi the way she went. Yo, Harris's campaign is dead. <laughs> it's so dead. And it's hilarious because she just, like, she's so phony. She's so fake. She's so, like, manufactured that it's not even, it's not cute. And she got flustered. And one of the things I really don't like about Kamala Harris is her voice because it is that wobbly always you know perpetually on the verge of tears voice that I, that just sends the wrong signal um i i think that um it, it's unfortunate that we have someone on the stage who is attempting to be the democratic nominee for president of the united states who during the obama administration spent four years full-time on fox news criticizing president obama and to be the democratic nominee oh thanks he hold on let's get back to Old girl, right quick. Yeah, <laughs> that, 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 that fake laugh. Okay, so as far as her, what, what I say, I just got finished saying about love. Love does not mean that you do not um, ignore the faults. Love means that you see the faults and you try to help get past the faults. Unfortunately, we live in this society now that's been so feminized that no, 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 no. Love means that you got to accept me for who I am and everything that I do. And if you don't do that, if you don't, then I'm unhappy and I'll divorce you and take your children, take your wife. Okay, I think I went on a bit of a tangent, but the deal is, <laughs> is that love has become this, this like a feminized idea that no matter what the person or the entity that, you know, you have the love four does that it's perfect and there's no room for criticism i'm sorry there's always room for criticism um i i think that um it the united states who during the obama administration spent four years full-time on fox news criticizing president obama that's who ridiculous. has spent full-time that's who has spent full-time criticizing people on this stage as affiliated with the democratic party the same party that screwed her when she stopped, you know, playing, when she was like, wait, I see what you guys are doing to Bernie Sanders, so I'm not going to, um, what's the name of you? I'm not going to play your game. That's why there's been this conflict. And trust me, I didn't forget, but it's beneficial to Kamala Harris to act as if she doesn't know that this has been the situation. And Donald Trump was elected, not even sworn in, buddied up to Steve Bannon to get a meeting with Donald Trump in the Trump Tower. Fails. 
And once again, this is not a bad thing. It, even if she did do this, I'm not sure she did. I'm, I, I can't speak for any of these people because I don't spend my life with them. But even if she did, why is that a bad thing? See, that's the thing about these Trump derangement syndrome types that they'll sit there and say, well, he, he met with the president. It's the president. If you want things to get to get done, you don't care who is where they are. You just, hey, if you can do something for me, great. If you can't, fine. But it's always best to find out. A call a war criminal by what he is as a war criminal and then spends full time during the course of this campaign, again, criticizing the Democratic Party. What we need on the stage on, in the November is someone who has the ability to win. And by that, we need someone on that stage who has the ability to go toe to toe with Donald Trump and so Oh, sweetie, it, it ain't you. <laughs> like, it's really not. You can hear it in her voice, that wobbliness. It, no, it, it's not. Someone who has the ability to rebuild the Obama coalition and bring the party and the nation together, I believe I am that candidate. Obama cannot rebuild the Obama coalition. <laughs> I'm sorry, he can't. Like he, he's trying. He's like, hey guys, look, you, you gotta think about reality. They're like, no, no, you false god, you. <laughs> hey, no, trust me. <laughs> Obama cannot rebuild the Obama coalition at this point. So, what are you talking, woman? Thank you, Senator. Uh, Congress, yes. Congresswoman Gabbard, I'll give you a chance well, to respond. What Senator Harris is doing is unfortunately continuing to traffic in lies and smears and innuendos because she cannot challenge the substance of the argument that I'm making, the leadership and the change that I'm seeking to bring in our foreign policy, which only makes me guess that she will, as president, continue the status quo, continue the Bush-Clinton-Trump foreign policy of regime change wars, which is, is deeply destructive. This is personal to me because I served in Iraq. I left my seat in the state legislature in Hawaii, volunteered to deploy to Iraq, where I served in a medical unit where every single day I saw the terribly high human cost of war. I take very seriously the responsibility that the president has to serve as commander in chief, to lead our armed forces, and to make sure always, no, I'm not going to put party interests first. I will put the Thank interests you. of the American Thank you, Congresswoman. I want to I'm running for fantastic fantastically done because it's not supposed to be about a party it's not supposed to be about a group it, the only identity is supposed to be about particularly at that level is the American identity that same thing that uh there we go I think that's a little bit better the same thing that um you know Trump uh tapped into because no you can't sit here with these it, and it's the same rhetoric that had been used during Obama and Bush and, and Clinton and, and the like up until just now with Trump. That, hey, it, we're Americans. We're supposed to be one, like that. that is the identity that we're supposed to fall under. But because of playing identity politics for so long, there was absolutely no way that, um, you know, after his uh, tenure, things would just be able to go stitch back together in, in the proper way. It reminds me of that episode of the Boondocks when Obama got elected and Huey uh, Freeman was like, well, what's the problem? He's like, yo, what do, you, what do you see coming? He's like, the destruction of America. And for, as, for all the faults and all the flaws, I genuinely don't believe that that's what anybody truly wants. I believe a lot of people ask for things that they're not fully aware of what they're asking for. So... I just wanted to, you know, really dig into the whole national conversation right quick, and this gave me a pretty good Fourier into it. I'm really of a nihilistic mood. Like, none of this really matters. Uh, as much as I love you, Tulsi, I really do. We know what time it is. We know the game that's being played, but damn it, you keep giving them hell for as long as you can, sweetheart. Appreciate you. So with that being said, we're going to bring this one to an end. All the internet stuff. If you liked it, toss it a like. Dislike, go ahead, do that too. Nobody's scared of you. Sub. If you enjoy my fantastic voice and you want to get videos like this every single day, share because sharing is caring and YouTube and bitch you and the like aren't the biggest fans of your boy over here and speak. Let me know. What do you think in the comments? I mean, Kamala Harris is already done. So, I mean, it's technically Tulsi is too, but she like... <laughs> 
As long as the establishment keeps going after her, keep going, baby. I, oh, I love this woman. She's awesome. But once again, love does not equal you. Like, you know, uh, love doesn't mean you don't take a critical eye at it. If anything, love should mean that you take an even more critical eye, that you hold it to a higher standard as opposed to just, you know, no standards at all. But at least that's my beliefs. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. They're always open. And until the next one.